Hello, the internet. Happy Halloween. Here to talk a little more about the biology of aging. A few weeks ago, I posted a video that showed the hydra, a little animal that does not seem to age. But this week, I want to talk more about some technologies that might eventually be used to slow human aging. Why do we age? Now, it'd be easy to think that the reason that we age is because we just wear out, kind of like a car with high mileage. But it's not quite so simple. The, you can imagine this in terms of like a thought experiment where we could compare someone who was sedentary their whole life and is 80 years old, and they're gonna have a very different level of health than someone who is 30 or 40 years old and who has nonetheless logged the same number of steps, right? Somebody who is very active and logged a lot of steps in their 30 years is going to be very healthy as opposed to somebody who is very inactive their whole life and has managed to live to 80, probably not going to be very healthy at all. In point of fact, had they been more active their whole life, they might actually be healthier now. So it's sort of the opposite of wearing something out and is actually more like not just being strong or weak but something more complicated we might call it anti-fragile what i mean by that is that something that is strong has a very slow accumulation of damage as trauma and stress happen but something that's anti-fragile actually has a negative accumulation of damage due to stress. Now there are limits to that of course, but the basic idea is something that uh, Nassim Taleb described in his books that I thought was really interesting. And I think it'd be better to think of aging less as an accumulation of damage and more of a breakdown of this anti-fragile property of the human body. Okay, you want me to pause it because I've just said something confusing, this whole idea of anti-fragility. Yes. So, this is something that Nassim Taleb wrote about in a couple of his books, and I haven't seen the concept, like, mathematically modeled or uh, strictly measured. It's more of just a general idea that I'm comparing aging to, and the idea is just that things that get stronger when you hurt them are different than things that are just strong. So things that are strong, you hurt them, they get weaker, you hurt them, they get weaker, and eventually they break. Something that's weak, you hurt it, and it breaks immediately. Yeah. But what about, like, the opposite of fragile? Not just not fragile, which would be strong. Right. But, like, anti-fragile. Not just a small amount of fragility, but the actual opposite of fragility. Give me an example. So, yes. arguably, an economy. So you have a big challenge to the economy, and if it's a good economy, the economy takes a big hit, but afterward, it learns from those mistakes, reworks the supply chains, and ends up stronger than it ever was. Okay, um, is Enough. it possibly maybe like building muscle? It kind of uh, makes me think of that. Absolutely perfect example. So, because if you hurt yourself and then, you're, but if you're strong, you hurt yourself and you get back up because you're strong, you're working out, say you're working out, you're rebuilding your muscles, are you not? Absolutely. Kind of like that? So, there's no way to build muscle except by. A certain amount of breaking it down, breaking it down to build it up. Exactly. So when you okay, when, I, I don't want to say injure muscle, but when you make micro tears in muscle, when you work out really hard, then your body senses that it has been challenged, stressed, even damaged a little, and it then builds back and goes farther than it was previously. And so the net result of working out is you get stronger but the only way to make that happen is was, to work out is to work out is to stress is to in some 
again, I don't want to use the word Im injure, but damage. You do have to damage your muscles a right. small amount. Right. Now, I said in, uh, earlier, and I'll repeat it, that, that there's limits. <laughs> like, if you end up with uh, rhabdo, you're, you've gone too far. God, that guy. <laughs> Right. If you're peeing brown, Ooh, uh, your you have worked out too hard, and that is no longer... That's no longer productive. You're, That's you're no, destructive. I'm you, sorry. You are definitely going too far. But mo a certain amount of stressful exercise that does damage to the muscles is necessary to rebuild and get stronger. And so in that sense, the human body, up to a certain point, is anti-fragile. Yes. Probably especially when we're young. Yes. And so as we get older... That... Which is why you should do it while you're young. Oh, yeah. Because when you're older, that's going to help you maintain. Yeah. I think you will be healthier longer yeah. if you've worked out... All the science for, bears you out. ...for a while in your life. But Absolutely. The earlier you start, probably the better for you. 100%. So when they look at people who go into their late, you know, later life, they go into their 60s and 70s with high muscle density... Those people do way better. Everybody slowly lose muscle as they get really old. Sure. But if you go in strong, you have a lot better quality of life than if you don't. Yeah. Um, and that is, is, again, speaks to my point that it would be as if a car with 100,000 miles was a lot stronger than a same age car with 20,000 miles. That just doesn't work for cars, but it works no. really well for people. Yeah, I was like, cars don't do that. Yeah, so that's my point. Okay. But that just pushes the question back. Why is the human body anti-fragile? And there are a number of reasons, but I'm going to focus on two. One, the human body runs out of stem cells over time. Stem cells are the cells that regenerate cells as they slough off. So you could, as one particular example, you know, the inside of your cheek is constantly sloughing off epithelial cells. We can even have a look at some of those under the microscope. But how does our body keep making cheek if these cells are sloughing off? Well, deeper in the cheek tissue are stem cells, and they make daughter cell after daughter cell, which are not stem cells, and which are doomed, which will not regenerate endlessly. They regenerate a few times, and then they die stuff off. Eventually though we run out of those stem cells and we can't regenerate nearly so well. Hence the anti-fragility breakdown. Now why do we run out of stem cells? Well they accumulate damage like any tissue and we our damage repair mechanisms at the cellular level are not perfect and eventually these cells accumulate enough damage that they shut down and die. Or worse, begin to replicate uncontrollably and then we call them cancer. Now, there is a third option. These cells can do something called senescence. A senescent cell is a cell that probably should have shut down and died because of its internal damage, but didn't, and instead just sort of stopped. And it's just hanging around. It's not doing its job anymore, but it's also not dying. Uh, Kurtz Kazak did a great video on all of these processes. Yeah, I really recommend you watch that, but he called them zombie cells. And I think that's really a, a nice way of putting it. These senescent cells slowly build up in the human body over time, such that an elderly person has a much higher burden of these senescent cells than a young person. And they, they cause additional problems because they emit cell signals, sort of distress signals, that cause chronic inflammation, and that's, that's bad for everything. So one of the ways that you could ameliorate the effects of aging, that you could make people feel more healthy, more like they were young, would be to kill off the senescent cells that they've accumulated, induce them to die the way they kind of should have in the first place. But how do you do that? How do you kill just the senescent cells and not the rest? This has been done in mice, actually, but they had to be genetically engineered mice. So if you take a genetically engineered mouse with a kill switch in all of its cells, but you make that kill switch only activate when the cell is senescent and when a drug is pleasant, then you can induce 
the senescent cell killing by adding the drug to the mouse's food. So undrugged mice are totally normal. Drugged mice of this specific type kill all their senescent cells and they suddenly rejuvenate. They live 30, 40% longer, but more importantly to my interest, they get healthier. They look like younger mice, they act like younger mice, their gray hairs go away. And these, these lend some promise to the idea of maybe someday killing senescent cells in people. So how do we do that? Well, we need some way to discriminate between senescent cells and normal cells. How do we discriminate? Well, you kind of have to grab them by the surface. If you try to get into the genes, you could maybe discriminate, but most treatments aren't going to be able to get in there without causing problems. But let's get a cocktail and talk about that back at home. For today's cocktail, we're going to make ourselves a variant on the Manhattan. Put a block of ice in your final glass and get out some red bush. This is a bourbon cask aged Irish whiskey that I like for my variant on the Manhattan. Add that to your mixing glass and then get yourself some vermouth. I like about a half ounce of vermouth for every ounce and a half of whiskey. Your ratio may vary. To that, add a dash or two of Angostura bitters. And I like my Manhattans just a little sweet, so I'm going to add a little bit of the syrup from my Luxardo cherries. Give that a stir, strain, and serve. I like to garnish with a couple of those delicious Luxardo cherries. With a cocktail in hand, let's talk about getting old. Nothing makes a person more aware of his mortality than sipping a cocktail invented in the 1800s by and for people who are universally deceased except perhaps for walking in the cemetery. This particular cemetery is actually quite old, and most of the people were born about the time of this cocktail. A few weeks ago, I talked about how these little freshwater organisms called hydra don't seem to age. Uh, that means they don't run out of stem cells and they don't accumulate senescent cells, they just keep regenerating. So for creatures with smaller, simpler bodies, it seems that it's possible to overcome stem cell exhaustion and the accumulation of senescent cells. Now, I read a paper just this week that shows that there are circumstances under which some species of hydra do seem to age. If you take this one particular species of hydra, Hydra oligactus, and warm its environment, it gets too stressed and it starts to get old. Over time, it stops responding to stimuli as efficiently, it slows its production of baby hydra, and eventually it dies. So it'll be interesting to see how researchers working with this species track these changes. Do they run out of stem cells? Do they accumulate senescent cells just like other old, old aging organisms? I look forward to finding out. But let's look at some senescent cells. These are human cells that have become senescent. They turn on some enzymes, including one called senescence-associated beta-galactosidase, or SA-beta-gal, and some chemists invented this molecule. It turns blue when it gets chewed up by SA-beta-gal. So you can see this image that non-senescent cells are clear, but Blue cells are the ones that were deliberately stressed and driven to become senescent. What we need now is a way to specifically target senescent cells that are already present in an adult body. A new paper by Paul Block et al. published this year in Nature Scientific Reports explains one possible way to do that. They found a marker on cell surfaces that gets overexpressed when cells become senescent. The fact that this marker is on the cell surface is really important. That means you don't need to get inside the cell to find out if the cell is senescent or not. In fact, you can just use an antibody. Because antibodies bind to the outside of cells, you can make a senescent cell marker-specific antibody. If those antibodies carry a toxic cargo, then they will tend to kill these senescent cells. Antibodies with a toxic cargo already exist. That's called an antibody drug conjugate. When researchers stuck antibody drug conjugates onto senescent cells, the senescent cells died, but the same antibody had no effect on normal cells. So can I sign up? Could you inject me with these things right now? I want to get rid of my senescent cells. Alas, no. If you look at the antibody drug conjugate concentration, they needed 10 to 100 micromolar to kill the senescent cells in the Petri dish. Studies in Petri dishes are not studies in people. Another antibody drug, cetuximab, that is used in people has a nominal peak blood concentration of about one micromolar, 10 to 100 times lower than the necessary dose to get rid of senescent cells with this antibody drug conjugate. And that dose matters. It's not like any amount is fine. If it's too little, it's not going to do anything. If it's too much, it's going to be toxic. You know, like a Manhattan. 
half a Manhattan is insufficient for my needs, but more than three Manhattans and I will be sick. And honestly, the third one yields diminishing returns. So antibody therapies already do exist, so that gives me hope we've got a head start toward making antibody-based anti-aging therapies. It may not take decades to make senolytic antibody drug conjugates into a usable th therapy. So this paper is exciting to me. It gives me some hope that we can make rapid progress toward increasing lifespan and more importantly, increasing health span. That is to say, increasing the amount of time we spend being young and healthy, even if our lives aren't all that much longer. In any case, I hope you found this interesting. This has been Peter Allen for the Allen Lab.